power system modeling tools have played a long-standing role in analysis, research, equipment development, and project rollout. With the growing penetration of microgrids and distributed energy resources, simulation and testing has become more critical in maintaining the security and reliability of our power than ever before. However, traditional simulation and testing practices pose major challenges for microgrid integrators today. This is where real-time simulation comes in. The RTDS simulator uses dedicated parallel processing hardware to run a highly detailed electromagnetic transient, or EMT, simulation of the power system in real time. Real-time operation distinguishes the RTDS simulator from PC-based simulation programs or open-loop testing tools. Real-time simulation is significantly more efficient than other detailed modeling tools. 10 seconds of system response takes exactly 10 seconds to calculate. The simulation time step determines both the sampling period of the power system data and the amount of time available for the calculations required to reach the simulation output. Though the average simulation time step is between 25 and 50 microseconds, time steps in the hundreds of nanoseconds range may be required to simulate the switching of power electronic converters. The unique advantage of real-time simulators is the ability to perform hardware-in-the-loop testing where real, physical devices can be connected to the simulated network in a closed loop. Hardware-in-the-loop testing considers not only the device's response to the network conditions, but also offers insight into the dynamic response of the network to the operation or misoperation of the device. Closed-loop operation also allows for the testing of multiple devices. In fact, entire coordinating schemes can be put to the test this way. Real-time simulation can fully de-risk microgrid control and protection. Here's how it works. The RTDS simulator's modeling software, RSCAD, has extensive power system component libraries for simulating the network. Lines, transformers, machines, dynamic loads, distributed energy sources, power electronic converters, individual controls components, and fault and breaker models are available. This microgrid model, based on an industrial park, contains a source model representing the utility grid and detailed models of its three feeders. Among the components are a diesel generator, along with its exciter, governor, and other controls, a battery, along with its converter, decoupled current controls, and islanding detection logic, a solar PV array with its variable insulation and temperature input, as well as its converter and controls, and a combined heat and power system. RSCAD's substep environment allows user configurable subnetworks to run at a small time step in parallel with the main simulation. For example, a microgrid model running at 25 microseconds might feature several DER inverter models running at 2.5 microseconds. This arrangement, referred to as multi rate simulation, captures the high frequency switching and harmonic behavior of the converters and is suitable for testing firing pulse controls. However, this level of resolution is not always necessary when testing higher level microgrid controls or system dynamics. RSCAD also contains average value models, which run at the main simulation time step. These models accurately represent the steady state and transient behavior of the converter without representing the high frequency switching dynamics. In situations like this one, where many converters must be modeled without requiring the testing of low level control, Average models are often used to reduce the amount of simulation hardware required. RSCAD also includes multifunction protection and control elements like this breaker control component. The integrated synchro check element is used to ensure that the frequency, voltage, and phase angle of the microgrid and utility grid are within a user-defined threshold prior to reconnection. In this particular hardware in the loop testbed, the device under test is a commercial real-time automation controller, which might be deployed as a secondary level microgrid control system. Here, it's programmed to provide load shedding functionality in order to restore the microgrid frequency in the event of islanding related imbalances or other issues. The RTDS simulator's network interface card, called the GTNet, forms the interface between the simulation and the external controller. Signals are sent bi-directionally between the simulation and the GTNet via optical cable. 
The GTNet creates and reads data compliant with several different standard communication protocols and can be interfaced to multiple external devices via Ethernet. In the simulation software, the input and output quantities are defined and mapped to the GTNet. Real and reactive power measurements, frequency, and DER setpoints will be sent to and from the external controller via DNP3 protocol. Status and control signals for breakers and loads will be sent to and from the controller via IEC 61850 goose messaging. The user configures the data in both the RSCAD software and in the third-party software for the control system. For example, in RSCAD we see the controller's IP address designated as the DNP master, and we can see that the component refers to a DNP point mapping file. This text file maps DNP data points to signal names assigned in the RSCAD software. Similarly, we can configure the goose messages by opening RSCAD's built-in Substation Configuration Description, or SCD, file editor. Protection engineers will find a familiar interface for mapping external references to control signals within the simulation. In the third-party control system software, navigating to DNP settings, we see the DNP server IP has been set to point to the RTDS simulator's GTNet card. Once all software configuration is complete for both DNP and Goose protocols, and physical cables have been installed to connect the RTDS simulator, GTNet, and external hardware, it's time for testing. Once the case is running on the simulation hardware, we can observe our microgrid as it reaches steady state, grid connected operation. The user's PC pulls the simulator for data, which can be displayed as meters updating in millisecond range, or plots showing the output of each time step for a desired window. The user has the ability to dynamically control and alter the simulation, applying faults, taking control actions, and adjusting operating points. In area two, we can see that the battery is in the PQ mode of operation. The state of charge of the battery is constant, and there is very little current on the AC side of the converter. To test the connection between the simulation and the physical controller, we can go into the control software and command a new set point for the active power in order to initiate some current flow. The new set point is sent to the simulation via DNP3 protocol. In RSCAD, we can see the new active power output and the current from the battery converter. The state of charge is slowly decreasing as the battery injects power into the grid. We can test Area 2's response to an islanding event by tripping the feeder breaker. We would like to see the battery switch from PQ mode to voltage frequency mode in order to control the voltage and frequency of the island. We can see the feeder frequency is now 59.9 Hz. This voltage phasor diagram illustrates the difference in frequency between the utility grid and the microgrid. We can use the controller software to adjust the feeder frequency set point and watch the simulation respond. Next, we'll issue a reclose command from the controller for the Area 2 feeder breaker. The breaker will close when the synchronization criteria as defined in the breaker control component, are met. The battery then returns to the PQ mode of operation. Moving into area one, we can test the load shedding functionality of the controller. Here we have several loads that have been defined as either critical or interruptible. We can island area one to test our microgrid controller. Upon islanding, we can see the microgrid frequency begins to fall and then load I2 is shed by the controller. The microgrid frequency stabilizes at around 59.6 Hz. The governor and exciter controls of our diesel generator have also actuated and changed the quantities of P and Q injected into the island. We can then reclose our area one feeder breaker either locally or via the external controller. 
This is one of many tests that could be run on this controller. Manufacturers, utilities, and research institutions, as well as consultants, can run thousands of RTDS simulator tests on a single device during the factory acceptance, commissioning, or validation process. Hardware in the loop test beds vary greatly in size, complexity, and makeup. The RTDS simulator's hardware is fully scalable, from smaller systems capable of simulating microgrids or single substations, to larger systems capable of representing entire distribution or transmission systems with hundreds of lines at varying voltage levels. Input and output for the simulator is also modular, meaning that the difference between connecting a single controller and an entire suite of multi-vendor interoperating devices is as simple as adding input and output cards to the simulator setup. To learn more about these success stories and about how a hardware in the loop testbed can support your microgrid project, visit www.rtds.com and click Applications, Microgrids.